Today on Judge Faith, this Brooklyn broker says her trust was broken. I trusted him. He said, I will pay you tomorrow morning the broker's fee. He lied to my face. So Judge Faith puts on the brakes. She never mentioned to you that a broker's fee needed to be paid. No, not until That's after not true, Your Honor. Then I knew not true. Furthermore, He's about lying, it, so Your Honor. Yeah. Stop it. Sorry. Ma'am. I will give you an opportunity to respond, but if every three seconds sorry, you interject with he's lying, you're not helping. And later, a missing charger drains a friendship. It really does hurt me that he's taking things to this extent over a charger. We got 19 years of friendship. I love that charger. I use it for everything. <laughs> like, Look me in my eye and I want you to tell me where that charger is. <laughs> Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Shelly Safty says the defendant didn't pay her broker fees after she found him an apartment. She is suing for unpaid real estate fees and emotional damage. Defendant Norman Chira claims the plaintiff never told him to pay her a real estate commission. He's countersuing for defamation of character. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, we have Safty versus Chira. Thank you, Barbara. Shelly Safty? Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant Norman Chira? Correct, Your Honor. For $4,980 for an unpaid real estate commission and emotional damage? Yes, Your Honor. And you are counter-suing, sir, for $5,000 for defamation of character? Correct, Your Honor. Okay, we'll start with you, Ms. Safty. Tell me what's going on here. Um, I've been a real estate agent for many, many years. Where are you an agent? Uh, oh, in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Your Honor. Um, and I got a phone call one day from Mr. Chira that he's been looking for an apartment to rent. So I, uh, I showed it to him. He was interested in it. And he liked it. And he took it. And then he just never paid me the real estate fee and the $50 credit check fee. So that's okay, why we're so, here. So tell me how this works. In New York, a lot of the buildings hire brokers to find people to rent apartments for them. So the building owner and management, they don't have to do it. They will hire somebody like you to go and find people interested in leasing the apartments in the building? Yes, because mm -hmm. you know mostly the owners don't have time to open the door um, for them. So they find a trust, you know, trustworthy broker? agent or company broker to find them good clients. Did you lease the place that she showed you, sir? Yes, I did, Your Honor. So in this particular building, are you the sole broker for all the units in the building? Yes, Your Honor. And what is your fee? One month broker fee. Okay, and that's pretty typical for New York, right? Yes. Okay. Prior to you helping him find this unit, how did you know him? So I don't know him personally. He was just, you know, he's a member of our community. Uh, we what do you mean of, by that? You know, we have like a Jewish community in the area. Like I know his nieces and nephews went to school with them. Mm -hmm. That's about it. But actually, um, he actually f located me through an advertisement. And on the advertisement, which I have in one of my evidence, mm -hmm. um, saying that it had one month broker fee applies. May I see the advertisement? Is this the advertisement that he saw, you're saying? Uh, it's not true, you're right. I never saw the advertisement from day one. How did you come to learn that Miss Safty was showing units in this building? Through a friend that she mentioned. His name is Irving. He had gave me word of mouth that uh, I have a friend who's a, a broker who can show me an apartment. And from there, I met her. I have a witness testimony. And, and I, Hold on a second. Oh, sorry. From there, I met her, and I was on time. And uh, the manager says, OK, she's running late. Just sign, sign. I says, no. Sign the lease? Sign the lease. I says, no, Mr. Manager, I want to just go over a few questions I that I have for her. And I okay. waited and waited and waited. And I wasn't she, late. And Hold finally, on a second. And finally, she came to, to the meeting. and. Uh, and I, and, and I gave the uh, manager uh, one That's month deposit. That's not true, Your Honor. And I was thinking He's about it. He's lying to Your Honor. Ma'am, ma'am, sorry. <laughs> I will give you an opportunity okay. to respond, but okay. if every three seconds sorry, you I interject with he's lying, you're not helping. Okay. okay. <laughs> Prior to you signing the lease with the management company, did you ever have a conversation with her about a broker's fee? No, Your Honor. 
She never mentioned to you that no. a broker's fee needed to be paid. No, not until after the facts. After he signs the lease, you then realize that he signed the lease and he paid rent and security deposit to the landlord, but he has not paid your fee. What do you do then? I trusted him. He said, I will pay you tomorrow morning in cash the broker's fee in front of the witness and in, in front of the manager. So what happened? He said he was a, rel a religious guy in the community. What happened? He lied. <laughs> he lied to my face. And he's an, you know, he... So you never said that to her? No, Your Honor. I said, okay. I, I will get back to you. We'll discuss everything. I have no. to go back to my engagement. No. There was an engagement prior to meeting her. She Norman, showed up you're late. lying. She showed up late to the, to the meeting that we no, supposed no, no, to have. No, 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 no. That's not I'm at, I asked you one question, yes, and that right. is, did you tell her that you would pay the broker's fee in front of the manager when you I, signed I the lease? I said to her, we'll discuss no. the arrangements afterwards. So I called her afterwards, and then she says, I need one month. I says, no, no deal. I'm giving you back the keys. Find another tenant. Not true. And she went over to the to the religious leader of my community yes, and to family that. members of, of everybody that she knows, and she makes sure she tainted my name. When you say religious leaders, who are you referring to? The rabbi of the community. So she went to the rabbi of community and did what? And she went over and said, this, is, this gentleman named Norman Chira took an apartment and he did not pay me commission. In the Arab Jewish community, before you go to the next step of the legal department, you go to the, to the rabbi of the community to go try and solve it. That's the only reason why I went to the rabbi. He was not answering my text messages. He's lying. He told me that he was going to pay me the next day. Well, but that's pretty typical in New York that people mm -hmm. pay one month rent for a broker's fee. Not for one year. For three years or two years, yes. No, it, it, it is, sir. Okay. I lived in New York for a number okay, of years. Right. It is pretty typical for people to pay one month's rent for a broker's fee. Coming up on Judge Faith, the broker breaks out the evidence. <laughs> were you following him? Different direction, Your Honor. I just spotted him. Did you know that you were under surveillance, sir? No, ma'am. Some brokers probably would have let it go. Not this one. And later, something doesn't add up. I know somebody took my charger, and they know that this charger means a lot to me. What's really going on here? People don't sue over and file a $70 lawsuit over a $25 phone charger. It's really kind of ridiculous. Plaintiff Shelly Safty says the defendant won't pay her a commission for finding him an apartment. Defendant Norman Shearer claims the plaintiff never told him about the fee. He's countersuing for defamation. Let me see the text message. I have everything. Like, I didn't... Did you ever send her a text message saying you would pay her? No, she had sent me uh, many text messages. Was, uh, Mike, was I want you to everywhere. answer the question I'm asking you. Did you send her a text... What am I about to read right now? Did, she, did you send her a text message saying you would pay her? I said, I'll work it out with her. I need time, but I'm trying to do the, uh, the, the respectful thing because she's in our community, because she tainted my name. So because she damaged your name in the community, you think you need to pay her the money, not because you really owe it. That's what you're saying? Correct. I, I would do something like that. I would just pay someone money just, just to clarify the facts. So why can't you go to Temple? I, because he went over to me and it made me feel like less than two cents. Who? The, the, lead, the religious leader, the rabbi of the community, said, listen, I heard what's going on. Whatever's going on, just clear it up. And I told him I will. And that's when I tried to work it out with her. You don't promise to pay people you don't owe money. So if you're coming in here telling me you tried to work out a payment plan, you tried to do all these other things, but you really didn't owe her money, I'm just saying I don't believe that. Not to mention there are many synagogues in New York City I don't believe the fact that she's went to your rabbi and had a conversation with your rabbi now prevents you from going to worship at any temple or synagogue in New York City. Well, that temple is close by, walking distance. <laughs> Walk a little further, sir. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Why were you ignoring her text messages? It became every five minutes, every 10 because minutes. Because you owed me money. During the course of a 10 to 12 hour period. What's the photo that you submitted? This I don't understand. Of him walking down the street. <laughs> it was just very aggravating coming, you know, taking my kids home. You're from in your car? I'm in my car, actually. Were you following him? No, I was coming, I was coming home. It's on the way home. I was not following, I'm going, the, I'm going this way and he's going this way. I was not following him. Okay. Did you know that you were under surveillance, sir? No, ma'am. Uh, it's a different direction, Your Honor. I just spotted him. You're also suing for emotional damage. Tell me about that. Yes. So I was just focusing on just like running after him, trying to get payment, texting him. Just trying just to get some closure in this. 
Well, you know? it seems like you did a I lot. I took off for work. You, I took off you for work. You spoke to the rabbi. Yes, you know. You had him under surveillance. I didn't have you him under surveillance. You sent him several text messages. Yes. To I, say the least. You gotta do what you gotta do. So, here's what I think. You say that she never mentioned to you that a broker's fee was required in order for you to lease this apartment. Correct. I don't find that testimony to be credible, sir. I do not think that's true. I think that you knew there was a broker's Thank fee you. for whatever reason. You probably thought that you you would get away with it, but you picked the wrong broker because she was going to hunt you down and get her money. I can tell you that Thank right you, now. Your Honor. And she took it to every length that she thought she had to, which included bringing you here to court today. Some brokers probably would have let it go, not this one. You understand? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about defamation of character claims. A defense to defamation of character is the truth. And when someone goes and they tell the truth, which is, you owed her money, I think that was the truth. You may not like it. You may not like that she told her rabbi. You may not like she told other members of your community. But you know how you remedy that? You pay her the money you owe her. You owe her $2,450, just in this case, for the plaintiff. Have a good day. Plaintiff Sean Shepard says his longtime friend stole his cell phone charger. He's suing for the cost of the charger, bus fare, and emotional damage. Defendant Sheena McReynolds says she's not responsible for her friend's belongings. She's countersuing for emotional damage and lost wages. She is joined in court by J.B. Dotson. Your Honor, in this case, we have Shepard versus McReynolds. Thank you, Barbara. Sean Shepard? Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant Sheena McReynolds? Yes, Your Honor. For $559 for a stolen cell phone charger, bus fare, and emotional damage? Yes, Your Honor. You are countersuing, ma'am, for $2,800 for emotional damage and lost wages? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We'll start with you, Mr. Shepard. Tell me how you know Ms. McReynolds. Give me some background. Your Honor, I've known Sheena for over 19 years, going on 20. We're basically family. And it hurts me today to be in court suing her over this charger because of it being stolen from me. Basically, we do music together. On the radio? Yes, Internet? Ma yes, ma'am. If I wanted to listen to you, where would I go? Oh, uh, you would go to next to blow, radio.com. <laughs> How long have you been a radio host? Two, three years now. It's what I love to do is entertain people, so. Okay. So what has your relationship been like with her prior to this incident that happened with the lawsuit? It was great when she is doing events and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll invite myself, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What, what do you say about that, about your friendship with him? Uh, our friendship was uh, great as of now. It's just, it's going downhill to me personally, and I've been seeing a lot of things that's really making it go all the way down, so. Okay. But. So what happened with this, why'd you bring this lawsuit? What happened? We went out one night, and I was over there. We went to a club. So you decide to go to the club, and you leave what at her apartment? My backpack, my daughter's, and my friend left his coat, and I left the charger on a heater on the corner because I rushed out the door and took my battery off of the charger. This is a phone charger? I love that charger. I use it for everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> it, it's my livelihood. And you say you go to the club and come back and it's missing. Yes. Everything's there but my charger. I notify them that my charger is missing. Everyone looks at me stupid, like they don't know where this charger is, they don't say anything, and their favorite show is on. Ah, true. Watching what show? I'm just curious. Probably Judge Faith. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Coming up on Judge Faith, was this just payback? I think they are in cahoots because her roommate thinks I'm still in his change. Every time Sean comes over there, my money comes up missing. Do you know what happened to the charger? Your Honor, I don't know. It could have flew out the window. Like, honestly, <laughs> I don't know. Did the charger fly out the window? Plaintiff Sean Shepard says the defendant took his charger that he left at her house. Defendant Sheena McReynolds claims she's not responsible for her friend's belongings. Do you think she stole the charger? Well, how do you get to that conclusion? Well, we were at the club, and I was supposed to go half on some food. 
we were supposed to get chicken. <laughs> and I, she come out with a basket with two pieces of fish and french fries for a group of six. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not going half with you. And then I tried to eat a french fry and she got mad. Like, no, you can't eat none if you ain't going half. <laughs> so I, I did get mad. <laughs> right? So you think in retaliation, for you not paying for half of the fish that she ordered, someone stole your charger. It's one more thing. I think they are in cahoots because there's wow. this rumor going around that her roommate thinks I'm stealing his change every time I come over. Who is your witness, Jay Dotson? Yes, ma'am. Why don't you step up, young man? How you doing, young? You are Miss Sheena's roommate? Yes, ma'am. You thought he was stealing your change? Every time Sean comes over there, um, my money comes up missing. And I don't steal change. You just sue people over $25 charges? It's the right. principle. Mm -hmm. Every time he comes over to visit Sheena, it's like we have an unwelcome visitor. And he never leaves. Like, he'll stay. That is a lie. He'll stay. He'll uh, eat food, won't contribute to food. It's like me coming to your house, going to your refrigerator, and not asking you for nothing. That's what Sean does. Do you know what happened to the charger? Judge, it could have walked out the door. Did it walk out the door? It grew legs. I don't know. I don't know. You seem like you know more than what you're saying. Look me in my eye and I want you to tell me where that charger is. <laughs> He's lying. It could have flew out the window. Like, honestly. I don't know. Did the charger fly out the window? Your Honor, I don't know. All right. Thank you, sir. You can have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> Ma'am, you are countersuing for $2,800 for emotional damage and lost wages. Yes, ma'am. He's been basically aiming at my people to, to make them believe that I'm something that I'm not. Basically, he's been posting up uh, evil things, saying that I'm a thief. What's wrong with you? Nothing. I feel charger. disrespected. And you, are you I had a to bad cry? Halloween because of it, too, basically. What's really going on here? People don't sue over and file a $70 lawsuit over a $25 phone charger. Are you jealous of their relationship? What's going on? And now, Judge Faith rules. I'm not jealous of their relationship. I just look at it like I really did trust that it would be there. That was my whole thing. Like, it's not the $25 charger. Like, I could come out of $25 a lot to buy this charger, mm -hmm. or $40. It's yeah, just... with his change that you took. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm joking. <Joseph. laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I'm kidding. What do you say, ma'am? Oh, uh, I was just saying, like, it really does hurt me that he's really taking things to this extent over a charger. We got 19 years of friendship. You, you hurt know? me. How did I hurt you, Sean? Because my charger missing. Uh, what do that got to do with me? Okay, here's what we're going to do here. I'm gonna give you your photo back of your charger because I know that means a lot to you. <laughs> <laughs> right? He, he might sue you, Judge, if you don't. <laughs> In order for me to find her responsible for this charger, you have to prove she took it. You haven't done that. There are too many other people in that apartment. He lives there. There were other people that were there. All of you were drinking. For all I know, you took it with you and dropped it. Thank you. Exactly. And because you don't know, you can't convince me that she took it and that she's responsible for it. As far as the emotional damages, you are bringing the emotional damage upon yourself for taking things to this extent. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. For filing a lawsuit over a $25 charger and suing a friend that you've known for since you were 10 years old. It's really kind of ridiculous. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. As for your counterclaim for emotional distress, I assume you just filed a counterclaim because he sued you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I figured as much. Thank you for being honest. I can't believe you said I ruined your Halloween. <laughs> wow. So I want to wish both of you good luck. I hope that you can salvage your friendship in the future. Your counterclaim is dismissed. Your claim is dismissed too, sir. Have a good day. <laughs> If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story.